Ladies and gents, welcome back. A bit of good news this morning, but this good news comes with a little caveat. Now, we talked about the story of Sheila Net Lewis a few weeks ago. Actually, we had Sheila on the program to, to talk to me and to this audience about what was going on with her. Now, she put together a Give, Send, Go uh, to raise funds because she was denied a organ transplant and was forced to seek treatment outside of Canada. She had to go to the United States where she found a doctor who was able to, you know, uh, treat her for this uh, condition that she has, which she's not allowed to speak about. She's been placed under gag orders uh, along the whole way. She went to the Supreme Court of Canada where they denied, I think it was, yeah, the Supreme Court of Canada, uh, where they, they denied hearing her case. They didn't want to rule on this. And, well, again, she went off to the United States and funding, raising funds was the way to go about this. Now, here's the update on the story. Sheila Nett Lewis, the Canadian woman who was denied a life-saving organ transplant over her choice not to get the COVID-19 vaccine, has reached a satisfactory settlement with the doctors in Alberta after she and her lawyer filed a negligence action against those doctors a few months ago. The update was posted on her Give, Send, Go fundraising page. We've not been able to obtain any further clarification or information at this time, but we'll bring any updates as they come in. Now, we can look at the Give, Send, Go. Now, this is a prediction that I, I, was, I was hoping for, actually. This is something I was, I was suggesting I hope happens and that would be that uh, the people involved in this case would see how much outreach was happening from the Canadian people to say, okay, we'll change our minds. This is some serious pressure here. Um, what we, We've been making a big, terrible mistake in, in this call, in this case. And this may be what happened here. Uh, again, I, I spoke with Sheila previously on the show, but I haven't gotten any more information. I don't want to get her in trouble over this. I haven't spoke to her since that time. Now, there is updates on the Give, Send, Go page here where she's raised over $122,000 for this case. Now, it looks like it, it may be a case where it's going through and Alberta Health Services will be performing this uh, medical procedure. As many of you heard on Sheila's interview with Viva Fry a few weeks back, Sheila and her lawyer commenced a negligence action against the, or the her doctors a few months ago. The parties have recently reached a satisfactory settlement in this matter, and all funds raised through your generous donations will be going towards Sheila's health care needs moving forward. Thank you for all your prayers, support, uh, kind, encouraging words and your very generous donations. Now, they went on to say more. So this was uh, uh, as of the 15th. Now, as of the 18th, there's a another uh, update to this story. As you know, this fundraising initiative was established to assist Sheila Annette Lewis's, uh, Annette Lewis in finding a medical solution in the U.S. after she was denied a transplant in Alberta. So many people have supported and contributed to this initiative, and we, and Sheila, thank you all from the bottom of our hearts. While efforts are ongoing to find Sheila a solution in the U.S., a legal action was also commenced in Alberta, as discussed in the interview, which Viva Fry did with Sheila and her lawyer. I also had her on on this uh, show here, where she explained uh, the same thing. The interview can be accessed at the link posted in the earlier update. I'll make sure that there's a link in the description down below. As mentioned in the last update, we are advised that as a result that the legal action, a satisfactory settlement has been reached. The settlement is subject to very stringent confidentiality provisions. And this is what I was getting to. They want her to be quiet about this, I'm guessing, because, well, it's very embarrassing. It's very embarrassing that for the longest time, and after, even after this whole pandemic, after she got uh, testing done to, sh to prove that she had antibodies for COVID-19, they still denied her, and they were still denying her up until, uh, obviously, on the 15th when this announcement was made. With very significant consequences to Sheila, that if confidentiality is breached, so uh, we're guessing that she'll be denied the service again if she breaches this confidentiality. So I don't think she's going to be on uh, a tour doing interviews again after this point. So 
this is uh, this is where we're at with this case. That is all we know and all we're permitted to know under the terms of the settlement. The resolution and the settlement of the, of the legal action will see Sheila requiring significant funds, including but not limited to expenses while Sheila is away from her home for medical reasons such as long-term accommodations, day-to-day -day living expenses, and medications. I guess we can infer from this that she will be treated in Alberta. And this is, um, I mean, I don't have any confirmation. I have just what this statement gives here. We are sure that any fair-minded person would find this consistent with the purpose for which this initiative was established. However, if anyone who has contributed wishes to have their donation returned, then please contact us to make sure, make that, the, that intention known and we will honor it subject to any deduction that give send go might take from the donation however if you wish support wish to support Sheila in her expenses regardless thank you we are so grateful for your support so showing a lot of good faith here that if people feel that uh, well she's getting some sort of service from Alberta Health Services if they want to have their donation uh, taken back uh, they they can uh, have that done so. Uh, but if you would like to continue to support her uh, with their, there's all kinds of other costs involved, as we know as Canadians here, uh, we're not covered for, uh, you know, medication and things like that. Obviously, anyone who receives a, uh, a an organ transplant will be on uh, immune suppressing uh, medication for the rest of their lives. Interesting that uh, they needed immune uh, <laughs> immunity from other things, but then they are going to go ahead and suppress her immune system nonetheless afterwards. That's just beyond me. If there is any significant updates from this current status, we will again advise. Thank you. And well, thank you uh, to the people who wrote this and obviously her lawyer team who's behind this to give us an update on this story because as, as as I was I was I guess predicting I, I hope I was hoping this was my hope is that the the pressure from so many Canadians coming together to say donate to this to this lovely woman who needs this medical service it's unbelievable that she would be denied in Canada where we say that healthcare is a basic right this is where what the the, the the is announced to us anyway we're told that it's a right uh, under under uh, our system that you would be able to get the service that you need in these cases. Now, through the COVID-19 pandemic and with the uh, mandatory vaccination uh, mandates that were put in, we've seen a completely different story. And this has kind of upset the whole, the whole idea of socialized medicine for a lot of Canadians. And well, it's, uh, it's calling into question a lot of things. So this is a massive embarrassment for uh, health services across Canada, and it seems like they're trying to backpedal on this one to save themselves further embarrassment, but again, trying to silence this individual so that she can't share her story about how she defeated uh, well, these this 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 system and what they were putting her against. But anyway, I wanted to bring this story to everybody so that everyone could get at least a follow up on what was going on with this in this case. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about this. Of course, she is going to stay silent because there's a lot at stake for her in this case, but. Uh, should people be able to hold people in silence? Uh, should the courts or the or the health services be able to use this against people? If these cases are happening, I think, well, I mean, we all want an open and transparent uh, society here. But when people are gagged by courts, it shows it shows a certain level of of distrust. Uh, mo most people would find distrust in a system like that. But leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me think, let me know what you think of this whole story. And we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.